Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Clean Pin. Clean Pin is a is a program here on from the Bleacher Sports Show in which we talk about wrestling, uh, everything and anything about wrestling um, that I was unable to cover uh, from the past week. Just going a little bit more in detail about them. And, uh, you know, as you can see from the content of this channel in the past week, really haven't done any current um, news and rumors uh, as far as wrestling goes. So there's uh, a little bit to talk about here uh, from the last week and some things that I missed there. Um, you know, really the last two weeks I've been going down, you know, uh, memory lane, been going down nostalgia as we end in a decade here, about the 2010s, and uh, what stuck out, uh, what stuck out about the 2010s, so that's kind of the wrestling content I've been doing, um, but here, you know, quite a few things that I, I, I want to uh, talk about, um, this is obviously in no particular order here. Uh, I think one of the the bigger uh, one of the the bigger stories here that um, that uh, a lot of people were talking about, kind of uh, a gasp, so to speak, uh, is in regards to Randy Orton. A lot of people were gasping. A lot of people thought. Um, that this was possibly um, possibly it for uh, for Randy Orton for quite some time that he would be going on the shelf uh, with an injury. Um, people were saying, speculating ACL, MCL tear after he got injured, um, or what people thought was an injury during a house show. So. Um, you know, you know, it was captured on, on like a cell phone video. Randy Orton being uh, helped to the back after an X was thrown during the match against AJ Styles. It was at a house show, right? So he's being held back. You know, he was saying, oh, that he was in pain, yada, yada, yada. So everyone was already being a doctor. It was saying ACL, MCL tear. And there, the speculation ran rapid overnight on Twitter. It was trending. Uh, dirt sheets were already talking about it. And then next thing you hear, WWE uh, says that Randy Orton will address his status on uh, Raw. So that was the cliffhanger and well played, well done by the WWE, they, uh, they, 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 they capitalized on, 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 on a trend, on, on the hype, uh, about Randy Orton, people were interested, they were talking about Randy Orton on Twitter, why wouldn't you then look on Monday Night Raw to see what's happening with Randy Orton, since he was trending, good news, well played. And uh, you know what what it what it, it, it turned out to be. It turned out to be a, a the way it was played on TV on Monday Night Raw. It was turned out to be a ruse by Randy Orton. You know AJ Styles makes his way into the ring. Uh, you know, Randy Orton saying, you know, uh, I can't wrestle, but I'll get, I'll, uh, you know, I, I, I will get to you soon. I promise you. AJ Styles continues to taunt Randy Orton, then is about to leave the ring, and bam, Randy Orton hits the RKO. Now, like I said, I get it in a sense, why WWE would say, tune in to hear what Randy Orton has to say, because he was trending. It was the buzz on the internet. Why not take advantage of that buzz on the internet, right? Of course. 
But this made no sense to me on the other hand. As far as character wise. Why would you need to hoax a, a, a ploy to get AJ Styles into the ring just to what, give him an RKO? If you have been successful in giving AJ Styles an RKO weeks prior, weeks prior to that, you are successful. And, you know, it, it also just goes against Randy Orton's uh, kind of like character where, you know, right now he's, you're, 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 you're pushing him as a face and this is a heel-like move. Heal. Well, maybe you're saying, Tom, he's a tweener. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, in the last couple of weeks, when you help guys like Ricochet and Rey Mysterio, that's pretty, you know, on top, like high up there face moves. So I don't know really. What was the point of it? It's not like Randy Orton needed his comeuppance. Storyline-wise, it did not make sense. To get a few extra couple of thousand people to tune in Raw, the status of Randy Orton on that hand, I'm sure it's successful. So, I guess we say a win for WWE. Um, a Monday Night Raw uh, went off the air, folks. The last Raw of the decade, the last Raw of 2019, ended with the Rusev Lana storyline wedding and no if you thought that a WWE wedding (laughs) would end in total romantic bliss well then you were wrong it did not end that way Rather, it, it, it ended with fisticuffs. It ended with wedding cake. Uh, Rusev jumping out of a wedding cake. And you've seen the whole fiasco unfold. But see, the problem is, if you thought that this was a, a, a one-off, uh, that you are not going to see no more Rusev and Lana. That it will be ended somehow. Well, <laughs> it just layers and layers uh, are being added onto this storyline. So it, it's going to extend. I mean, these segments are... Massively, I guess, in, in uh, on at YouTube at least, these clips are massively producing. These are the highest segments by far rated <coughs> on Raw the last couple of weeks. So it's gonna be going, and I'm sure, and that's even a rumor. The, the word is is that Vince loves this type of stuff. He loves this angle. So I'm sure you could pat full steam ahead that this angle will continue. But there are a couple of things that stood out to me 
Um, that didn't make sense. First of all, the quote unquote um, supposed um, the supposed exes of uh, Bobby and Lana. You had first um, Lana's first husband make his way down the ring and is there to badmouth Lana saying how he was wronged by Lana as the first husband. Well, he goes into the ring and uh, is clobbered. Goes down onto the apron, onto the floor after being knocked out. And then he goes to the back and disappears. Storyline wise, if we are to believe this, this, this hatred that Lana's first ha- husband has for Lana after being uh, knocked off the apron once you get your comeuppance to uh, once you get once you get your uh, wear it all back why would you be walking to the back and not to the ring to get your revenge to keep on fighting going after Lashley you traveled all that way first of all to get past WWE security just walking from the back not even from the crowd get knocked down on your keister and that's it you're going back home that's the second thing I mean that's the first thing what's the second thing you might ask well I'll tell you what's the second thing uh, the second thing here is I guess this was uh, yeah, you know, same thing again with uh, Lashley's uh, significant other, she got knocked out by Lana out the ring, and that's it. She doesn't do anything either. She also comes out from the back. Like, wait a minute, she was in the back the whole time? Didn't they bump into each other somehow in the back, maybe in catering? So, how are these people like? Coming from uh, from the back. How are they coming from the back? Uh, where is security? Were they, uh, you know, were they guests of uh, Bruce and Lana, and then somehow they turned on them? And if they were guests, how come? They, where were the guests? There was no one in the ring. Why? Why no guests? Why no one in the ring? It's the little things that matter. You know, and, and, and the way this uh, just kept on unfolding, you know, with, with the two X's, um, you know, people chanting, Jerry, 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 Jerry. Uh uh, they were chanting Jerry <laughs> I don't think that was honestly uh, 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 just a, a, a sign of flattery I, I, I honestly don't it was bad it was bad and then you know the the the, uh, the makeup was all over Alana uh, from after Bobby Lashley and Lana embraced. Lana had makeup all over her face. Um, I, <laughs> I I don't know. If they were looking to portray it this way, but. It really came off bad. Uh, 
to me it did. I, I don't know too many people that like it. And, and when you think about it, who is writing this? Uh, everyone is quick to to uh, to blame uh, Vince. But from all indications, everything that you hear, Vince is uh, ideally every everything gets has to get go through Vince, is from what you understand. But I, I mean, Paul Heyman, from what we're able to do with connect the dots, he's one of the lead writers. He's the main guy writing this or producing this. How does Paul Heyman, how does Paul Heyman always seem to escape a blame? How does that happen? Is it because he's Paul Heyman, he's everyone's favorite, and uh, he just escapes the blame? Amazing. Uh, you also have uh, the re-debut of Liv Morgan on uh, Monday Night Raw. Through the vignettes um, that were portrayed, I I don't know about you guys, but I had no idea they were going to go this way with. Liv Morgan. Did you? I didn't. Uh, it, it, it felt like whatever they were portraying with all these vignettes was in the course of a week from the last vignette until a Monday Night Raw, uh, it, it felt like there was more stuff missing and whatever they had planned uh, was just completely scraped and, and they started anew from where they are now. So that in, uh, that in lies the problem. I think this was rushed. I think they were looking at the storyline and they were like, crap, we didn't think we were going to continue it this long. Uh, well, quick, what do we do? What do we do? I know. Let's throw in Liv Morgan into this. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it just, to me, didn't feel like the vignettes were going that way for Liv Morgan. It felt like it was more of a, I don't know, like an Emelina thing or even... I was crossing my fingers, as were a lot of, I'm sure, the people on the internet. Maybe the complete transformation that you will be seeing with her uh, be tapping into her darker side and, uh, you know, teaming up with Bray Wyatt for like a, a, a version of a Sister Abigail, Sister Abigail reincarnated. Uh, La, 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 la. <laughs> of course, that would be too good to be true. Instead, what you have for a plane is, uh, I don't know if it's uh, lesbian or bisexual. Like, this was the big thing. The, 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 the problem is, it doesn't make sense on two main, two main things here. Okay, first of all, and it ties in with that uh, Rusev Lana wedding, uh, Lana Bobby Lashley wedding. Um, being bisexual, it's like who cares? What is the point? This is 2020. It's accepted. It's accepted. No one bats an eye. Nor should they bat an eye. It's accepted part of society in 2020. There is nothing wrong with it. Nothing 
controversial me, bisexual, lesbian. And who cares? Honestly. That's the first part. And, you know, if B... Now, listen, that might have been a controversial type of layer to that storyline. You know, had it been maybe, you know, 20, 30 years ago, kind of like what well, everything what they were doing uh, with ECW back then and uh, Mona Wanalea and, you know, that type of stuff. Back then, that was, you know, more controversial than throwing out Liv Morgan as this character. It, 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 I think, and and you know, and the second part why it makes no sense is Liv Morgan has been on TV before, but they never had any interaction. I don't think they even were on the same roster at any point before. So how are you going to connect the dots that there was this? Um, attractiveness and this is why she was scorned how how are you going to connect the dots in all this it makes no sense now I know since then they have thrown up you know Liv Morgan or you know has thrown up pictures of them together like on on social media But if you rely on that on social media, uh, then if you really dig deep certain stuff, then you might say, well, uh, I really don't see how this is so. And here's such and such why to explain why. If we're going to rely on social media uh, for this uh, you know, example case. I just think Liv Morgan was just thrown in there, and that's bad because if you're reintroducing a character, being that her main thing now is that she's bisexual, lesbian, and no one cares. No one cares. It's 2020. If this was 1970, I'm sure people would be compelled or they want to hear more but no one cares so what has happened you're introducing reintroducing this character Liv Morgan right off the bat why do you care unless you know certain things do evolve, evolve and develop as the weeks go by and I guess well, so goes the saying we gotta wait until it evolves. You know, people that, uh, and a lot of people weren't happy about this angle. Notably, uh, Sonia Deville and uh, Andy Rose. You know, and it seems like uh, might be, and, and, and you know, and this is why you know, they, they, they took to Twitter, and that's why a lot of people are assuming that they hate also this uh, storyline, this angle. Uh, meaning that the rumor is, is this is something that they pitched. This is something that they actually pitched. Um, as they are both on SmackDown, it seemed like it was going that way. Uh, it seems, it, it, and honestly, it would still be like, honestly, to me, who cares? But it seems like it was more believable uh, because they already had this connection on TV. But apparently, the, you know, they, they pitched this idea. That idea was scrapped uh, from them or never it went any further. It seemed like it was was going in that direction, and then scrapped, and they give this to uh, Liv Morgan. Um, and, uh, listen, I, I, I could see, I could see, like, even in real life, 
why Sonia Deville uh, would be upset by this is because she might be afraid where WWE is going to take this creatively, like make this a <coughs> some form of a, a mockery. Where it's going to come off hokey and it's going to come off ha-ha. Where, you know, uh, where, where for Liv Morgan seems like this is a character. Where for Sonya Deville, this lifestyle is uh, more of a reality. So I could see uh, where she uh, might be uh, frustrated. Bit of older news here um, as we're kind of moving on from that whole raw. Oh man, you, you just close your eyes, right? And you hope, cross your fingers and your toes, and you hope uh, that Monday Night Raw will be a whole lot better going into the 2020 uh, season. I do want to talk about the uh, uh, comment that uh, you know, Booker T made about two weeks ago. Um, and he uh, pretty much said you know, he, he, he thinks the NWO Deserves uh, the you know, Hall of Fame nomination. No one's uh, going to argue with Booker T on that. He then uh, elaborates further and he goes on to say that actually every member of the NWO. Deserves to be a part of the Hall of Fame. What? So that means, yes, for all you Horace Hogan fans out there, Virgil fans, Ted DiBiase fans. You know, that they should go in to the NWO because of their contributions. See, my whole thing with this, and I guess when you look at other sports, well, when you look at other sports, it even seems like with the other sports seems like almost everyone and everybody is getting into the Hall of Fame now. But, at least with my pro wrestling Hall of Fame, can we at least keep it sacred, hollowed grounds? Horace Hogan, Virgil, did they ever draw anything? What was their contribution to the NWO. Was it significant? No. Did anyone even know that Virgil, Ibiasi, Horace Hogan, that they were members of the NWO? No, they were, for the most part, um, prominent and not even and when, when I say prominent, they were on Saturday Night Live uh, being knocked around, making look silly most of the time. Scott Norton, too, put that in there. They contributed, yes. Joe McEwing, a, a utility player for the Mets, contributed. And he was a, a great bat off of the bench. Because you know what? You could stick him in second on second base, shortstop, third base. And, uh, you know, for the short term there, 
he would be very impressive in spurts. But he was never a guy that produced big numbers where you're like, wow, this guy is a Hall of Famer. Not everyone deserves a trophy. And guys like he, like this, that I just mentioned for the NWO, were background guys. And all in all, majority of them, what they really contributed now, was just taking a bump or two or three. But listen, they made a heck load of money and they were on TV. Uh, name recognition when uh, when they would leave uh, a, a promotion. I'm sure they made a ton of money on the Indies too. Selling merchandise, merch tables. But come on. We cannot be putting in everyone and everyone into the Hall of Fame. Let's keep it sacred. Now, I'm sure there are already some Hall of Fame inductions that you say, geez, well, so much for sacredness. I, I get it. But can we at least try to do a little bit better still and not put in everyone and everyone? To me, NWO, you know, was guys like Hogan, Outsiders. Well, that was. NWO to me. That was the NWO. We also have, um, you know, another rumor and uh, uh, speculation that was was uh, coming out uh, within the last couple of uh, days here uh, regarding AEW that Arn Anderson. Um, has been, um, you know, signed by AEW, and I thought he was actually already backstage. I mean, I could be wrong, but he's going to be like a. Um, he's going to be a on-air talent. I mean, uh, an on-air talent, but he's going to be on-air. He's going to be a manager to Cody Rhodes. Is the terminology that we use. Manager or coach to Cody Rhodes. See, and, and, and I, I get what the WWE, um, WWE what AEW is trying to do here. Uh, they're, they're trying to, uh, you know, play into uh, nostalgia. Uh, Arn Anderson, uh, a name from the past. Uh, you also have Tully Blanchard right now uh, with Sean Spears, and that really well is really not really going anywhere. Uh, I think. I, I think we still haven't really fully utilized. Uh, to the best way, Tully Blanchard for Sean Spears. What exactly does Tully Blanchard do for Sean Spears besides just staying in his corner? Arn Anderson. Uh, I don't know why. What his affiliation with Cody Rhodes would be. You know. Nine times out of ten in the wrestling world back in those days, um, Arn Anderson and Dusty Rhodes were on opposite side of the ring. So for this to make sense storyline wise, why is Arn Anderson in the corner of Cody Rhodes? What is the point? What does this do exactly? And do people even watch an AEW? Because it seems to be a little bit of the younger gener- uh, of the younger crowd. Do they even know who Arn Anderson is? Will they even care? 
honestly, really. I mean, Tully Blanchard comes out there with Sean Spears, and you hear pin drops, chirps, 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 and uh, really no reaction. So I don't get what exactly is the the point in all this. Cody Rhodes doesn't even really need a manager. He's established. Look at him. He's already had uh, a world championship bout opportunity. I think uh, announcing this, like Arn Anderson being a coach, you might argue, would make more sense, let's say, for uh, an NWA. Then I could be like, all right, I get it. NWA nostalgia, mix this in, get it, got it, good. But with AEW, and especially Cody Rhodes, uh, what's the, you know, what's the point? What's the, what's the reasoning for all this? And I guess, you know, as with everything, we have to wait and see how it all plays out. So with that being said, I wish you a happy, healthy new year. Uh, we'll be back uh, next week, another edition of Clean Pen. Hope all is well. Ciao. Adios, amigos.